Hey there everyone, Alfredo Reviews here, bringing you books to decide, are they worth reading of a second breakfast, or do they deserve the fiery pits of Mount Doom? One day she won't respond. One day. But it won't be this day. You do understand that I'm going to hit that every time, right? Another month comes, and we come to what is actually my birth month, at least on YouTube. <laughs> not birth, not my actual birth month. That's actually in July, as you all know. But this is my birthday month on YouTube. Specifically on April 4th, this channel will be exactly one years old. And man, where does the time go? But anyways, it's it's been a wild ride. As of recording this video, I have over, I have 165 subscribers, if I remember right. I don't know if that'll still be true by the time I, uh, by the time I put this out, but it, it'll be, it's a great, I never actually, uh, it's just, I, I don't know how to put to words how, how honored I am. When I first started this channel, I mean, sure, everyone entertains that idea of putting it out there and just being discovered and becoming this great 10 million sub channel making $3 million per video. You know what I mean? If I was being realistic with myself, I never really expected to reach beyond 50 subscribers at most and most of those being friends and family that I you know tricked into subscribing to me but I have found that this community specific the, this booktube community has been very loving has been very great positive and just overall enjoyable I'm very glad I ended up joining this channel because this 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 niche because I've just had a lot of fun being here and it's just been great when it comes to what I'm going to change in my channel I really don't have much to say. I, I like it how it is. Uh, to address one thing, I said I was going to stop wearing button-ups, but I ended up wearing button-ups all last m month. That was because I was expecting some nice new shirts in. They didn't end up coming. And so, you know, a little bummed by that, but it happens. So I I'll play it by ear in the future to determine if those, if those button-ups are going to stay or not. But anyways, apart from that, I don't really have much else to say. So I'm going to move on. And I'm going to talk about the theme of this month. Did you know that when I was first de deciding whether or not to make this YouTube channel, the biggest debate I had was, am I going to be a gaming channel or am I going to be a book channel? You know what? I've decided what could have been. This month's, this month's theme will be video game based books. Now, obviously, this will be books based on video games, written before video games, written, inspired by video games, stuff like that, you know. Things that, you know, in some way have to do with video games, basically. This this is just a quick throwback, you know. It, I think it'll be fun. I already have a nice selection selected out for the main TBR. As well as a few smaller ones I'm going to get to. I, I do apologize for not getting very many, you know, minor things out last month, like I promised. Man, Melancholy Magic was a lot tougher to read through than I thought it'd be. And that, that took quite a bit of my time. So by the time I finally got that done, recorded, and edited, I... Didn't really have the time to read all the other stuff off the TBR. Especially considering, you know, Mist was over 500 pages long. So, let's start. Now, the first book that I'm going to read this month is Halo, The Fall of Reach. Okay, so first thing first, I'm going to show this off. Look at this awesome bookmark. Just look at it. It's so great, isn't it? But as you can see, I've already sort of started it. But The Halo Fall of Reach is, I believe, the first novel ever released on the Halo frame. I don't know too much about the details, but this was actually, I was told, one of the best books in the entire expanded universe of the Halo franchise. Now, I haven't, I'm not too into Halo myself. I've played a significant portion of Halo 3. And I've been terrified, I've been haunted by horrible actions and trying to do multiplayer on, I think, Halo 4. Just, I know it won't translate well, but the fact that Halo was the scariest thing for me for a while due to one of my friends. Anyways, childhood trauma aside, I don't really have much, too much experience with the Halo franchise, so I'm not a major fan but I'm also not completely on the outside either. So I'm actually looking forward to this one. What better way to do it? But let's start with the synopsis. Humanity has expanded beyond the soul system. There are hundreds of planets we now call home. The United Nations Space Command now struggles to control this vast empire. 
After exhausting all strategies to keep the seething insurrectionists from exploding into interplanetary civil war, the UNSC has one last hope. At the Office of Naval Intelligence, Dr. Catherine Halsey, Halsey, I've heard her name said, I just cannot remember how it's specifically supposed to be said, I believe it's Halsey, Halsey has been hard at work on a top secret program that could bring the end to this conflict, and it starts with 75 children. Among them, a six-year-old boy named John. Halsey never guessed that this little boy would become humanity's final hope against a vast alien force hell-bent on wiping us out. This is the story of John, Spartan 117, the Master Chief, and of the battles that brought humanity face-to-face -face with its possible extinction. This is actually pretty good. Believe it or not, I've never actually played the video game Fall of Reach, so I will be going into this book completely blind. And you know what, honestly, I, I, I don't even know if Fall of Reach can portrays that exactly the same, so... But I'm actually excited. The few pages, the, uh, the, the amount I've already read through has actually been pretty interesting so far. And it, it reads pretty well. It's not... It's not one of those military fictions that over-focuses on military jargon and other stuff, sort of like one of the downsides of the Republic Commando series in the Star Wars EU, but it's not so disconnected from that that it might as well not be. So yeah, again, I'm looking forward to this and it sounds fun. Now the second book, it'll be Warhammer, Death's Messenger. Now this isn't a 40k book, so I apologize for that since I know that is actually probably the uh, more popular version of the Warhammer, but this is actually their fantasy book. I honestly have very little experience with the fantasy world. In fact, to be completely honest, I only know a lot of the 40k lore that I do because I like making fun of my friend who's really into Warhammer. Because I have a very um, complicated relationship when it comes to the Grim Dark franchise. I personally find that many Grim Dark stories go from being dark to just being Grim Derp, as I call it. Where it basically goes so far off the dark end that it just becomes laughable. That being said, I really have nothing to say because I really don't know much about the fantasy world. I even tried to play the Vermintide 2 a while back, but I found it too much like a medieval clone of Left 4 Dead at the time that I just sort of put it down and forgot about it. Don't hate me in the comments, but that is what I felt. Anyways, to move on, here's the synopsis as it is on the back. Village life in the Empire is a relatively dull affair for Rudy. Living with his father, he dreams his life away, wishing he was anywhere else but here. That all changes when a group of savage beastmen attack the village, and Rudy is accused of chaos worship in the subsequent investigation. Forced to flee, Rudy heads for the safety of Marenburg and the life of, an, of adventure that he so he switched so hard for. I don't know why I'm having such trouble reading this. And that's pretty much it. It's, I guess, nice, simple. So there's not much to go on from that. It basically sounds like that, you know, stereotypical plot. Young boy dreams of adventure. Adventure finds him and he's not ready. And now he's considered the bad guy instead of the hero. And has to clear his name. I'm sure that maybe be more interesting as I read into it. But again, I have absolutely no experience with this. And I'm not gonna go. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you that I saw this in the back, and I'm like, "What the?" Because apparently, this is every book in the Warhammer Fantasy play in the fantasy role play book series. Now you can't see it too well, but Death's Messenger is 113. So I am not starting from the top. All right, <laughs> I'm gonna read this, and hopefully it stands on its own. <laughs> Moving on. Now the next book is based on a series that I have limited experience with, about the same as Halo, but it is a book, it is something that I own, and it is something I have fonder memories of, simply because of the era it was around. This will be Resistance, The Gathering Storm. I'm also going to apologize because I, uh, I kept referring to it as... Uh, okay, so when I, I was doing some stuff in the background and I kept referring to this as the fall of man, like the game, and I confused some people, so I apologize about that. But the, I'm not too familiar with the Resistance lore. I, I played a good portion of the first game, but I got it so late into the lifespan of the PS3, like I had a PS4 for a couple years after I got Resistance, that it, it didn't 
I, I wasn't able to get as into it as I should. However, my fond experience with Resistance comes from the time when... You remember those uh, good old days? <sighs> you remember them? <sighs> good old days back when Walmart used to do them demos with the games. Those were the days. <laughs> it's been like years. But yeah, for, for those of you who may be young and don't know, Walmart used to do demos where you could go in and you could play on the games play on the consoles in the store to play games. Now, that that's like basically asking for death nowadays with all the diseases and stuff out there. But back then, that was like the number one draw to me to go to the store. I my, We would go to the store. The moment we went by the electronic section, I was gone. That's where I'd be for the rest of the day. I'd be sitting there playing demos all day until my parents dragged me away. Or until I was forced to get off by someone waiting for me. Because I was a polite kid, as addicted as I was. But The Resistance is a... Again, I'm not terribly familiar with the lore. But that was one of the demos. One of the... I believe it was early PS4. Or maybe PS3. When you're, about, when you're young and you play these games, you remember the graphics looking much better than they do when you revisit them. So that's all I'm going to put out there. But I believe I played the third demo quite a bit. This reads somewhat like... A prequel, maybe, but looking some stuff up online, it sounds almost like a sequel. But here's the basic synopsis Great Britain, July 1951. Three years ago, Russia went dark. Nothing got in, nothing got out. The world assumed it was just political strife, but it was the Chimera, voracious extraterrestrial invaders. And in December 1949, they burst across the Russian border and poured into Europe. The luckiest humans died. The less fortunate succumbed to an alien virus. Within a year, most of Europe had fallen. Only Great Britain, after struggling desperately, had kept the conquerors at bay. But as the Chimera were repelled, they were evolving, building, planning. America, 1950, November 1952. The Chimera have crossed the Atlantic. Their lightning strikes on American borders are devastating. Cities are lost, small towns overrun, citizens transformed into monstrosities. Enter Lieutenant Nathan Hale, U.S. Rangers. A veteran of the Chimeran conflict, he is uniquely immune to the alien virus. And when regular troops can't stem the Chimeran onslaught, Hale and his special operations team meet the menace head on. But while they battle the relentless Chimera, deadly power games rage in the White House. And when Hale discovers a far-reaching conspiracy, one with deadly consequences for the human race. His allegiance to country and mankind is stretched to the breaking point. That's pretty much all I gotta say about this book. It sounds somewhat interesting, and I hope it holds up to a read. And finally, this book is gonna be the unique one, in that it was a book first, and then the game was made. And that is Metro 2033. Now, Metro 2033 is basically what I would describe as Russia's version of Fallout, in a sense. Now, that is grossly underrepresenting it, but basically it is the same premise. There was a gigantic nuclear war in the past that wiped out pretty much all life on Earth. What few bits of humanity survived fled into deep, fled deep underground and managed to survive the initial radioactive wave that swept through and killed most of everything on the surface. Apart from that basic premise, that is where I know it diverges. Metro is a lot darker and philosophical than Fallout is. At least the one, at least more the more recent titles, Fallout 4, Fallout 3, New Vegas. What is cool about this is this is actually Russian. This this book was written in Russia and deals with Russian people. This is a translated work which yeah, you can kind of tell considering how big this book is and how small those letters are, this is going to be a book that takes a bit to read. Metro 2033 is perhaps most famous because of its game series. Metro Last Light, Metro 2034, I think. I don't remember what it was called. And then Metro Me Exodus. And that's really what made this book so popular. I have played Metro 2033, but I have not read the book. So I thought this would be an interesting case. Actually, fun fact, I was going to order these online, 
but ordering them online was like going to be a hundred bucks for all three because they were super expensive. But on a whim, I went into a local Barnes and Noble and asked them if they carried it. And it just so happened that someone else had already ordered the Metro 2033 series, at least 2033 and 2034. They didn't have 2035, but never showed up to pick them up. So they were willing to sell it to me for a much cheaper price than I would have gotten it if I'd got if I'd ordered it online like I planned to. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Let's read the synopsis. Will it sound the same as the game? Let's find out. In 2013, the world was devastated by an apocalyptic event, annihilating almost all mankind and turning the Earth's surface into a poisonous wasteland. A handful of survivors took refuge in the depths of the Moscow underground, and human civilization entered a new dark age. The year is 2033. An entire generation has been born and raised underground, and the besieged metro station cities struggle for survival, with each other and the mutant whores that await outside. Artyom was born in the last days before the fire. Having never ventured beyond his metro station limits, one fateful event sparks a desperate mission to the heart of the metro system, to warn the remnants of mankind of a terrible impending threat. His journey takes him from the forgotten catacombs beneath the subway to the desolate wastelands above, where his actions will determine the fate of mankind. Sounds pretty interesting. I'm not going to say too much since I've already played the game, and I don't know how similar they're going to be, so that's all I got to say. I got a couple comics that I also want to do throughout this. In fact, I know for one, I, one for sure I'll be able to do. However, I'm not going to promise anything, because when I promise things, apparently it doesn't get done. But anyways, I hope that those sound enjoyable. I hope this coming month will be interesting. I wish you all the best of luck. I'll see you when the time comes. This has been Afro to Reviews. And with that, remember, with every book comes an adventure.